So here we go, pre-lesson, section 5.1, last unit of second trimester pre-calc. Congratulations, you're almost there. Um, so today, they're gonna, uh, we are going to introduce you to parabolas. And this is an interesting little thing, though, because as you can see, you guys were taught parabolas back in good old algebra 2. So you've got this kind of generic little equation, kind of like y equals mx plus b for lines. This is your generic equation for parabolas. Um, and just taking a look at it and then comparing it to what pre-calc is going to teach us, um, as you can see on page 156, and we'll cover this a little bit when we do the packet lesson, but there's a brand new kind of introduction to what appears like new information. And what I'm going to do, a little bit of a gamble, but I don't think it's much of a gamble, I'm going to lean heavy on what we already have been taught in Algebra 2 and just manipulate the information. And truly, these things are the same. They just don't look anything alike, okay? So, generally speaking, I'm going to just eliminate this, but I'm going to piggyback one thing. If I look at that, I see that the x squared, the x is squared and the y isn't. Those are always going to be like this. Or like this. And it's like this if A is positive. It's like this if A is negative. And see, you're saying, well, there's no A. Well, yes, there is, because we're going to use our Algebra 2 lesson, because I think it helps. I think it's easier. And there's really no need to throw a whole bunch of new stuff at you and make you, make you relearn it all again. It's my opinion. And you've got this little formula here, A equals 1 over 4C, but I'm already talking about a few things at once, so let me hone it, hone back into what I was saying over here. This guy, you notice the X is not uh, squared, but the Y is. So these would either be opening up to the right if A is positive or A is greater than 0, or they would open up to the left if A is negative. Okay? So keeping that in mind, um, there's really four ways that you could actually draw a parabola. If it's up or down, then this little line that cuts the parabola in half is called the axis of symmetry, and, and therefore so with that one. And those will always be x equals some number, because it's a vertical line. As you can see, uh, this drawing right here, we have a different dotted line, but see, this isn't the axis of symmetry. This is called the directrix. Let me go ahead and write that. I forgot to. This is the directrix. Um, this is a horizontal line, but the axis of symmetry would go right down the middle, and it would be x equals something. Therefore, this is going to be y equals something. But let's get to this. The axis of symmetry for this one would be a horizontal line. The axis of symmetry for this one would be a horizontal line, which is y equals some number. We'll talk more about that later. Now, to really, really get into how are we going to get from here to here, we have to know that A is equal to 1 over 4C, and C is the distance from the focus to the vertex. Now, the focus is, is a, uh, the way I explain it, um, it's where you set up your band. Uh, it's where you put your guest speaker if they want to speak from a parabolic sort of stage. The sound is best. Um, but anyways, this is your focus. Uh, I like to refer to parabolas as tulips. And if you think in the, in the springtime, you know, you got your tulips that blossom. You see that? Tulips blossom. And what do they do? They envelope or they go around the pistil, P-I-S-T-I-L. And that's what the bees come in and pollinate. And so I refer to the focus as the pistol, just to bring a real life application sort of thing. And then the directrix is what I refer to as the soil. Now, if you were in my class right now, we would do this fun little thing where we actually act like we're a, we're a tulip bulb, and then we blossom, and then we also always remember we blossom away from the soil. And our petals go around the pistol, which is right around the old dome. And that's an always. Why is that important? 
because if you look at this little rascal, my focus would be in here somewhere, my directrix would be here. If you look at this guy, the focus would be here, my directrix would be approximately there. If you look at this one, my vertex is there, my pistol's here, my soil is there. This one, my soil would be here, my vertex is here, my focus is here. And remember, the distance from the focus to the vertex is always C, but the distance from the vertex to the directrix is always C. So in order to figure out what A is, we have to know what this distance is, we have to know what this distance is, or we need to know what this whole distance is, and then just cut it in half. And that would allow us to know what other, what either this or this is. Okay, with that in mind, just, with that in mind, just one more thing. This right here could also be written y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And to be honest with you, this is more in line with what we've been doing with stuff like this. a sine bx plus c plus d. You see, you got your a, you got your b, you got your c, and you got your d. So I'm going to lean towards this a bit, okay? Now that's just kind of a warm-up, a little introduction, uh, but there's more coming in your packet lesson.